राष्ट्रपति जी वी आर डिलाइटेड दैट यू हैव एग्री टू रिसीव द फर्स्ट कॉपी ऑफ द बुक नेताजी सुभाष चंद्र बोस एंड जर्मनी ब्रॉट आउट बाय द फेडरेशन ऑफ इंडो जर्मन सोसाइटीज इन इंडिया आई एम पर्टिकुलरली हैप्पी दैट प्रोफेसर अनिता पॉफ इज हेयर टू प्रेजेंट द बुक टू यू आई एम इक्वली हैप्पी दैट हर हजबेंड professor martin paf son peter aron members of the families of professor cesar bos dr captain lakshmi sagal and his eldest niece are also in our midst today you will recall rashtrapati ji i had accompanied you to the residence of dr nita paf in augsburg in october 1995 when we had the privilege of meeting her mother and we met three generations of netaji's family it was a memorable event dr fa dr anita fast in her puff in her article in the book has written that her mother was her father's second love his first love she says was always india the book has several interesting anecdotes and incidents about an eventful period in netaji's life it was in hamburg in 1942 that the national anthem of india janagana mana was first sung when netaji addressed a meeting of the dosha indian gesellschaft again the slogan jai hind was immortalized in those days when netaji was able to secure some favorable conditions for the azad hind forge he stipulated that this would not be an aid but a loan which would be repaid by a free india and indeed he repaid the first installment himself from singapore there were several other connections of netaji which continue netaji set up the india information center in tier garden in berlin five and a half decades later when i signed the agreement for the purchase of land for the indian embassy chancery building it was in tier garden not far from where netaji center stood and the man whom he appointed as head of the center mr asian nambiar was a decade later appointed by pandit jawahar lal nehru as india's first ambassador to the federal republic of germany this book I would like to thank the publishers Mosaic Publishers and Anand Singh Baba for painstakingly editing it. It has several interesting revelations and I hope it will be widely read. I will now request Professor Anita Paf to say a few words and then present the book to Rashtrapati ji. Rashtrapati ji, ladies and gentlemen, uh it is my great pleasure and honor to uh present the book on my father's life in germany to the rashtrapati ji today the first copy of that uh many of you are familiar with my father's life also with his uh, time in germany but i'm sure there are a number of additional uh, facts which will be communicated in this book it's a mix of uh, historical analysis on that time by several historian who have dealt with this over the years during the academic work uh, my own uh, uh, contribution is maybe a bit uh, hard to define because i'm neither historian nor am i an eyewitness to the period so i tried to bring some of the more personal things but also put them in a historical perspective and i think one contribution that should be interesting for some of you who may not have seen these things is an eyewitness report and analysis by a former member of the indian legion uh, dr hartok who was interpreter in the indian legion was a very young man then and the and of course he has still got first hand knowledge of that period of time and i think that is quite interesting and valuable for those who haven't read them before uh there have have always been important and close ties between uh, my father and germany and uh, my father unfortunately was not around when 
his greatest wish that India become uh, independent came true. Uh, but I feel very gratified that the Rashtra Protegi today has agreed uh, to have this function uh, uh, at his uh, palace and home and office and that he honors my father this way. Uh, of course, as a, uh, a president hailing from Bengal, he also, I think, feels a, a special uh, affection and admiration for him. Uh, but I think it's still a very great honor that he was willing uh, to host us all here and to receive this book from him. Uh, I would also like to thank Anand Singh Baba, who has done uh, the major part of the work trying to get the tardy and undisciplined authors of the book uh, to contribute all the things that he needed. And I'm very thankful to him uh, for all the patience and uh, uh, diligence he showed. And I hope he will be satisfied uh, with the reception of the book. Thank you very much for coming to join us in this function. Dr. Anita Paaf, Professor Martin Paaf, Krishnadi Shugato, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great privilege for me to receive the first copy of the book published by the Indo-German Federation on the life of Netaji Shuhas Chandra Bose in Germany. In fact, when the book was conceptualized at that stage, I was informed by Sri Lamba that they are contemplating to bring out a volume on Nessage's days in Germany. To the students, historians, and to the common public of India, Netaji is always the icon and more revelations on Netaji more facts brought out about Netaji are always welcomed and cherished. I had the privilege of remaining present on an earlier occasion in the last January where Dr. Puff, Professor Martin Puff, all of them were present at the Netaji Shubhash Buru in Calcutta when the Bengali version of Shugato's book, His Majesty's Opposition, was brought. On earlier occasion, when I first received the copy of that book, I told him that I could not prevent the temptation of completing the book. It is a big, bulky volume. It took a couple of nights for me to complete the book, but it was so fascinating. And naturally, the book during the stay of, during his stay in Germany, his departure from Germany to come to Japan through, to Singapore through Southeast Asia, through submarine, is almost a household, that story. I have no doubt that many new facts will be brought out, as Dr. Anita has pointed out in this volume, who have contributed, who had the privilege of seeing Netaji working in close cooperation with the persons who knew Netaji. As Dr. Lamba has pointed out, that I had the privilege of visiting the Oxford house of Dr. Anita Paaf, and more privileged that at that time, her mother, Emily Senkel, 
was alive and quite healthy. I spent some time, and after I came back, then I came to know sadly that she expired. When I met her, she was quite okay, but perhaps she was not feeling well. Simply I can say when I met her, her charming personality completely overwhelmed me. If I had the time, I could have spent much more time with her, with the family, but I had the privilege of being at her house to pay my respect to her and to pay respect on behalf of the people of India. I have no doubt this book will find interest to every one of you. I am delighted to receive you at Rashtrapati Bhavan, the building which was inherited by us from the Britishers, constructed by them, which was the symbol of colonialism. And against that colonialism, Netaji devoted his life from day one. It's known to every one of you that after very successfully competing Indian civil service examination, occupying very high office, he sent a letter to Deshbandhu Chitranjan Das, where he expressed his desire even he did not reach India, but even then he expressed his desire to come and join the freedom struggle. Those days, ICS appointees were appointed in England itself, and they were on probation from the very day they, their results were declared. So stories of Netaji are so manifold. And in this book particularly, we will come to know some of the stories told by Anita, some others, those who came across with Nesaji in Germany. And that formative stage, which has been described here, even before going to Germany, his stay in Vienna, all these will be of great interest. And as Sugothu is already present and many others, as they are continuing to bring all relevant matters related to Netaji, they should continue to have more and more materials because quest for Netaji's activities is perennial in India. Thank you. Thank Indo German Federation for bringing this book and being present on this occasion. It is definitely an important mark in history that one of Netaji's work on Netaji is being released in the same building. He not only forced the Imperial British government to remove Hallwell Monument, which was a national flower in Calcutta, which was erected by the Britishers to vilify India. And he forced them through his movement to remove that Hallwell mo Monument. He had the desire not to dismantle but to convert it into India House, not the symbol of British imperial power, particularly when it was constructed. British imperial power was at its zenith. They have won the First World War. And this house dominated the British 
command and control over not only India, but many other countries in this region. I am glad that you have chosen to come here to release a book and give the first copy to me. Formal release will take place definitely in a more gorgeous functions. And we pay our homage to this great leader whose untiring efforts brought emancipation to us. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.